Test, test. I think it's working. We got enough battery to get through it. All right. There it is. Wow, it shouldn't have gone live automatically. That's creepy. Hang on, guys. Hang on. We're going to go live here in just a moment. Let me get things sorted. I'm supposed to have to press start. Good thing I wasn't saying anything weird or creepy, right? That would have been awkward or like in the bathroom. That just would have been weird. It happens. Life happens. Everybody has to use the bathroom. Even us gringos. Uh, okay, I'm just looking. Yeah, I see you guys popping in there. Good to see you. Hang on just a second because I started earlier than I wanted to. Um, switch cams. There's a cam. All right. See if I look cool here. Um, this is kind of in the way. Hang on. Yeah, let me put that just down a little. Got to illuminate myself, but not distract, you know. This is my Lego office. This is my real office. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Gavin Syme Live Show. I'm here. I'm back. I'm live. Good to see you all in there. NASCAR, Saddle, Israel, Campervan, Steven, Abstract, Echo, Leo's Madness, James Bomb. We're all... Beep, e, DJ, New York, Gothic. Everybody, shout out to those of you in the live stream. We got 30 here. A few of you showing up because you probably thought I was dead or something. But no, I just had an absolutely crazy February and I was basically working double time uh, dealing with, well, everything I have to deal with. I feel like there's a weird delay. This is freaking me out. You guys let me know if audio is good, okay? Because I feel like I got a cam delay in, in OBS. So I'm talking, right? I'm talking, but my real-time camera is not syncing with audio. So it's something with OBS. I'll have to check for an update. I knew this new version of OBS would wig out on us. Good to see you guys. We should still have a good upstream. We're on the fiber. Uh, very good. Muy bueno. Que bueno me puedes escuchar, amigos. Hmm, let's just see here what we've got today. I'm going to just try not to look over here because you have no idea how disconcerting it is when my feed. So here, here's what's happening. Right, this screen here, which you probably can't see, is my OBS feed, which is then coming through over here on the live stream dashboard. But I look at this, your chat's here, and my preview's here to see what I'm doing, and there's, woo, there's like a, a tenth of a second delay, a fifth of a second delay on this screen which should not be, let me switch to screen. It's really disconcerting. If you haven't live streamed a lot with things like this, this means nothing. This isn't the official show, by the way. We haven't started yet. So I can, I can talk about this nonsensory if I want to, because it's the pre-show, all right? It's the pre-show. Hola, compadre. Bienvenidos a la stream. Mm, what else? Looking at you guys is, I'm, as long as you guys can hear me, it's fine. It's just really wigging me out. And so after, after, I'm going to figure out what's going on. But as long as I got good audio and I got screen, I can do okay. screen, test, test. Weirdly, it's normal on the mini screen. mini screen. And there's a delay here. Okay, sorry. You guys know how I get about this stuff. I just know how I get about this stuff. And it, the stream was not... Hang on, I got a question from somebody. Da, da, da. And this is what I've been doing all February is with the, the businesses that I, that I work on down here that I help organize for is some staff shortages and stuff and trying to deal with that. So I've been basically burning the candle at both ends, which is why I've not had time to do a lot of videos, but I appreciate 
our channel backers and Patreons and people like that that support the channel, our super chin, super, super chatters that keep these streams going. And I thought, you know what? I got a few minutes. I'm going to go live because some of you guys, which I appreciate, some of you guys miss me a little sometimes, which is nice to be like, you know, an exile, but people still think about me now and then. It's kind of, that's, that feels good because sometimes to be honest, if I'm being perfectly honest, I feel uh, kind of ineffective because the world doesn't seem to be getting better. And uh, as we get older, we see the fight, right? The things we fight for and how the world just keeps trying to do the same thing. And so I try to document that in my speech. I try to document those feelings in, in taking photos. You may follow my other photo channel at Time Studios. Um, DJ Nuno, I appreciate the super chat. I really do. Tacos. I can still get a taco for... Tacos have gone up a little. Okay. So let's calculate this. Tacos have gone up to... Depending on the taco, but a good taco has gone up to more like 12 pesos. So at the current conversion range, 1999. So that's basically... It's still like... That's still like 29 tacos for me, DJ Nuno. And that's good. That's, that's, a, that's a few nights of, of taco goodness. So I appreciate that. Um... Snowballs, yes, Spokane, I'm sure, is cold. It's warm down here. It, it, we just we just popped out middle of February. We pop out of out of the cold. It sometimes gets close to freezing down here in Mexico. Very occasionally, I'm talking usually more like 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, occasionally at night it drops below freezing, but more around the, the neighborhood of here. And I'm in central Mexico around Carretero. It's it get Rarely drops above freezing. But this week, yeah, popped right back. I had a sweater on for a few days. It gets below. I'm going to say something about Mexicanos. Y por mi amigos mexicanos, no te tomo ofensa ni nada. Quieres de vil de la frío. Yo entiendo. Nuestros norteños son fuerte de la frío porque somos norteños. Y entiendo eso. No te preocupes. But at the end of the day... It drops below like 50 here. And and I, I, I love my Mex people, my Mexicano friends. But just like they make fun of me for growing up thinking a Taco Bell was taco, right? I make fun of them. Uh, well, this precarious situation goes back to our main topic for the day. So I'm going to come back to that photo on the screen right there. I tease them because when it drops below 50 degrees Fahrenheit in Mexico, um, it's, it's like, Hoop, break out, break out the windbreaker, break out the sweater, break out the leotage, and break out the goose town Ida feather jacket that I imported from the U.S. from my grandma. And they put it all on, all right? They put it, I, they put it all on. And I'm, I'm standing here something like this. And they say to me, Widow, no tennis frio. And I say, pues no, soy gringo, soy de la norte. And they say, this case being frío, no? And I say, pues sí, un poco, es como, 50 grados, pero wey, en la norte, es como menos 20. This is my Jalisco accent. I don't actually talk like this on the street. And they say, wait, no manches, it's being frío. And so that, That's how 
I get to be strong here <laughs> with my crappy accent and, and me not fitting in with the culture, being loud and rude. Because at least in one thing, they, they, don't, they don't know that I actually tried to be strong when I was in the North and, and resist blue ISIS and, and fight the corruption. So that, that means nothing. And, and so I, they're looking at me like, oh, this is the way I want us, La Frio. Bien buchón. And I'm off. And that's how we roll. You know? That's how we roll. So that's enough of that story. What else? Um, let me go back to the screens. Make sure I got everything sorted here. Um, put a marker there. I might cut that part out just so people can understand how the Frio works here. But in any case, was there anything else? I've just been... I don't particularly love. I mean, I actually enjoy it. Was, it was 80 at least today. So I do enjoy the warm weather. And let's be honest. A lot of us come to Mexico for a warmer climate. It gets cool, but most of the time it's warm. And we're coming into hot season around March. It'll be roasting, dry and roasting too much. But then it'll calm down. So what, what the U.S. thinks of as spring is actually the hot, dry season here. Then it'll back off a little bit. And, and it's very mild. I don't know if I could live on the beach like in Veracruz or Oaxaca, because it's so hot and humid. Like if you've been to Florida or Georgia or something like that, it's like that. And I love going to the beach. I don't love fighting with the quotas and the toll roads and all that kind of garbage, but the beach is so beautiful here. It's just, I don't know if I could live there. That's why we didn't choose the beach because when we first came down, it was like oh, running the generator all night just to try and keep a crappy air conditioner going in the RV because it was hot for us. If you didn't grow up in that, if you grew up in in like Florida, Georgia, on the coast, like Louisiana, yeah, you'll be fine on the beaches here. All right, so good to see you all in there. We got a good group in here tonight. I just really, thank you for the likes, the comments, the super chats and everything. I just really wanted to do a quick live stream tonight because I was like, you know, it's been a while. I've had a crazy month. And let's just talk, right? But I will do a main topic because I've been watching some of these things and talking to people. I've been hearing some of what's going on in the North. And unfortunately, it still gets crazier. Let's open up main topic for tonight because it is getting precarious. And I just thought, you know what, let's, uh, let's talk about that. Um, and yeah, Jeff Winehouse, I just make sure you guys share last video I posted was on Jeff Winehouse. It was an updated version of his story because my other videos were years old and just a little dated feeling. And so I just did that new video on Jeff Winehouse. He's plugging away. I mean, he's got the defenders. They're trying, they're, they feel like they're making progress, but it's so slow. You got guys like Jeff Schaefer still in. You got the Lenny Peltiers, you've got the Schaefer Cox, you got James Hamilton's, people that are set up and framed. There's, from political activists to people that our system is just framed, the list just goes on and on. And that's one of my frustrations is after all these years of fighting, they're, they're still in jail. And the U.S. doesn't really want change. They think people like Trump are going to save them. And so it's the same old, same old. So yeah, no matter what state you're in, you're whether we're at, even in Montana, right? We'll talk about that. Let's open up today. Hey, it's Gavin Syme. Welcome to, I'm in, I don't know. Let me put a marker because I'm going to trim this later, right? That's what we do. We trim the show. We're pros. We're pros. We do this right. We're not amateurs, all right? So let's do this. Hey everybody, it's Gavin Syme. Welcome to The Exile Show. It's The Gavin Syme Show, whatever you want to call it. Most people just call me names, but we're here to talk about what's going on for a few minutes tonight. Had a fun pre-show here on today's live stream. And well, now let's just talk about how things are getting a little bit precarious. You know, I was actually thinking, what am I going to talk about tonight? And then I came back, right? And because I'm always shooting, right? I'm always, as a photographer, you may follow my photography channel, also Sime Studios, I'm always taking photos on the streets. 
it's been something I've been pretty passionate about because there's so much to see. As a, as a foreigner here, yeah, I'm a resident of Mexico, but as a foreigner, it's like I see things like kind of fresh. Still, after five years, it's just different. I know more. I'm not as naive, things like that. But I, I still look at what happens on the street, things like this kind of stuff that you just probably wouldn't do in most areas. And that's it's, I mean, you see trucks going down the highway like this. Don't get me wrong. Depending on where you're at, cops are always trying to screw over trucks like this and mess with them and get a bribe for 10 bucks and screw people over. But when you go around, and let me just, as I walk around the streets, I see this chaos and it connects with me with what's in the real world. Sometimes at times it's funny. Sometimes it's sad. Because in Mexico, the politicians are a lot dumber. I mean that in the best possible way. If your politicians are dumber, you know more what they're doing. It doesn't make them less corrupt. It doesn't make them less trying to screw you over. But their politicians are next level dumb. We're talking about multiple governors going to prison for stealing from children's cancer funds, things like that, which I know occasionally happens in the US. But the blatant corruption of just getting caught all the time in their corruption is higher here. In the States, to be a high level politician, you kind of got to be a member of the club and you've got to play the ball right because they want you to make it look good. You have to be able to spin the propaganda. Here, they're not even that good at that. And so you see how precarious it is. There's more freedom, I think, in Mexico. Not because the people leading Mexico respect freedom more. They're crooks, just like politicians all over the world. The reason there's more personal freedom is because the level of organization, they're still organizing with papers in a file cabinet lost in the back of an office. They don't have a criminal database where they pull you over and they're looking you up. They're just going to pester you and hope they can get a few bucks out of you. It's much more primitive. And because of that, Mexico is more free for those of us who want to live free. Sometimes it feels a little more Wild West and, dare I say, precarious. They're not as good at hiding. We keep the roads cleaner in the US. And yes, I know that's saying something because the US roads suck pretty bad, but they suck next level in Mexico. Again, saying that in the nicest possible way, it sucks that we're still paying all these gas taxes and the roads suck and they still try and charge us tolls, which is why I fight back against it at times, even here. But what I'm getting at is the precarious nature of the world. If you can see it more, it does lead, I think, to less state worship. People don't fight back like they should in most of Mexico, but they also don't have this adoration of police and government. If they get mad, they'll still get in a fist tight with the cops, throw them in the ditch, or just push them back in their car more realistically because they don't actually want to face off with three drunk dudes. And the driver, hopefully sober, drives off and everybody goes on their way. Now, I know this sounds like anarchy and chaos maybe to some, but the fact is police go out and they try to screw people over. The police are enforcers for corrupt politicians, not actually trying to make society a safe, free, and welcoming place. If you have any doubts of that, just look at the way that we invest billions of dollars into a border and restricting free travel for people at that border that should have every right to cross. Instead of defending freedom. And then we have the audacity and the nationalism to, to say, oh, I'm conservative. I support freedom in the Constitution, with, which forbids restricting border crossings for individuals. doesn't forbid the existence of the border. It just forbids restricting people crossing. People have the right to move freely regardless of the country. And that's protected in the Constitution. And so we have people, we have a, we have a society now that's so ignorant Our society has become so precarious all over the world that people are just blindly following whatever party, whatever politician they believe in, whatever brand of fascism they believe in, whether it be left or right, conservative or Democrat. And then they say, well, I believe in freedom. We got to defend freedom. What they mean is we got to defend freedom for me and people like me, not for people that I don't like. And that's the problem. That's why I never fit in with any of the parties. And that's why I kind of became like, well, that's why I'm in exile now. But that's another story. You can watch that here on the channel. What I'm getting at is that this precarious nature 
when things are orderly, is harder to see. It's party against party, right? But if the roads are clean, if the parks are nice, if there's not assassinations on the street, at least not normally, here's looking at you, Chicago. Of course, the U.S. is getting worse and more violent as well. What you see here is the precarious nature is more visible because the politicians are less organized, less united in their parties, and have less resources to cover it up. This goes all the way down to the little things. Today I was driving down the road and somebody had been run over with, by a truck. At least they had the decency to cover the body. But in the states where it would quickly be surrounded by ambulances and vehicles so that you didn't see it and so everything looked clean and spotless, right? Because the empire needs to look clean on its main thoroughfares. But here in Mexico, you will occasionally drive by and there's simply a body on the side of the road, whether it's from an accident or something nefarious. Not that it's being ignored, not that there weren't people there, but there it is. Everything is a little more raw. You see a little more, you feel a little more, you go out on the streets and the precarious nature of the world is just so obvious. And back to me taking photos, one of the reasons I like taking photos here is that precarious nature everywhere you go, the way things are just a little more raw, they're a little more crude, there's a little bit more humanness on the streets, and things are just happening. People are just going about their business and doing their thing, and living their lives, and and that isn't bad at all. In fact, that's refreshing for those of us who want some freedom. And so that's what I try to document with my street photos. And if you've played a video game where you're in Latin America and thought, oh, they stylize this for a video game, right? Um... They probably didn't. That's actually what it's like in Latin America. Like a scene here on Sunday where everybody's playing on the railroad tracks and having a picnic. And while certainly police are corrupt here and will try to screw you over, things like this are just normal. The idea that BSNF is going to come out and try and find you, arrest you, or threaten you because you go with your kids down to the tracks on a Sunday afternoon and have a picnic doesn't enter in to the general perspective of how people think. So these scenes that I show all the time on the streets that you might see in my my Instagrams, the way things look is just what it actually looks like here. It's not uncivilized, it's not completely wild, it's it's normal, it's just a culture that's different, that's not as whitewashed, where the precarious nature of the world can be seen just a little bit more. And where we don't cover things up quite as much. But at the end of the day, the corruption and the lies and the things that go on aren't actually all that different. Does that does that make sense? I hope that came across in terms of <clears throat> randomly throwing up a bunch of photos to convey this concept that I'm trying to convey of not only the difference in cultures in the U.S. and Mexico, but how a culture that is more organized, how a culture that feels safer to us is much more dangerous. You see, we hide away our corruption much better. It's not visible on the sleeves quite as much. Of course, it's getting worse and more visible as our police in the U.S. murder people in the streets. That isn't tolerated of police down here, despite the corruption. In general. However, what they've managed to do with this level of organization, with things being, dare I say, nicer, the roads being nicer, the organization being nicer, the resources being nicer, these are part, actually, 
yes, if we're, if we're paying a gas tax, we should have a good road. But how about we stop getting screwed over for the tax? But if you're paying the tax, there should be something you get for it. Thank you, guys. There should be something you get for that. And so the U.S. has used that bread and circus concept. If we give them something, it will connect. It'll make people not see what's under the surface. It will take the precarious nature that's actually not so different, where everything could still collapse and go into chaos, where the government is still corrupt, where people are still being sent to prison for crimes they didn't commit on a scale three or four times more than most of the rest of the world, including Mexico, where due process, despite our constitution, really doesn't even exist, where the Jeff Winehouses, the Schaefer Coxes, the Leonard Peltiers, the Bundys, the Native Americans, the Blacks, where anyone can be killed or sent to a prison simply for not obeying arbitrary rules created by psychotic politicians and enforced by violent psychopaths that we call police. That's a fascist state. But a smart fascist state hides the precarious nature of the world you live in. So you feel free, so you feel safe, so things feel beautiful in the park, because the average person doesn't think, I could be in prison tomorrow for the rest of my life and have done nothing. I could be shot by a cop tonight simply because I reached for my cell phone and nothing will happen to them. If you think about the nature of the precarious world you live in, then when you read news stories from a place around the world where things are more overt, you realize that the world and the corruption in it is not that much different. And the way, the only way that I know of that we can have any effect on it, and even then that effect seems slow and lumbering, is to love our neighbor, to try and act like Jesus, to try and fight for people, to try and care about other people. Because I'm always saying, if, if, if you all would fight a little bit, if we all would fight a little bit, the activists wouldn't have to go to prison. The activists wouldn't have to die they wouldn't have to fight all the time because everybody would be resisting a little. And that goes a key in Mexico, in Estados Unidos, in Iran, in Hong Kong. It doesn't matter. You have to throw away the faction and care about each other. And that's all I have to say in my main topic for the night is to talk about the precarious effect. You guys let me know what you think about this thought process in the comments, and maybe we'll talk about it more in the future. In the future, hit a like, leave a comment, and we'll see you on the next live show. Peace. Okay, that was our main topic. Hang on, put a marker. I'm just going to trim that out, because I think I kept that fairly short and concise. It, nobody will watch it, I know. Well, you guys will. You guys are cool. But nothing, these kind of things do not go viral anymore. Okay, I understand that. Um, oh, my 3D printer just finished. Hang on. Let's see what we got here. Ah, just off the printer. It's a pawn. I was working on a chess set. I was working on printing a chess set. And the pawn is fresh off the presses. This... This is us, right? This is us. And the kings and the rooks and all those kind of, those are over there. But uh, yeah, here's, here's me and you right here, guys. <laughs> Peace. All right. Now, before I close, bear with me. Mm -hmm. Make sure everything's in order. That was official show. I can show you guys more photos if you want to see. Like if anybody cares, I'll show you more street photos. And... That was my main topic. But mainly, I wanted a main topic because it's my job to organize and have a topic, right? Mainly, I just wanted to jump on here and talk to you guys about things. Um, let's see, what else can I show you from the street? What else, can I, what else do I got from the street? Make sure I don't, make sure I don't put anything too sexy here on, on the YouTube because this isn't the photo channel. This is the YouTube channel, all right? I can flip through some photos and if you guys see anything, you can just ask questions, okay? 
You know, I take a lot of photos of Volkswagen Beetles. I don't know why. I just feel like there's a representation of the culture in the Volkswagen Beetle. So I'm kind of always taking photos of, of Volkswagen Beetles in random situations because they made that vintage Volkswagen Beetle up to the 90s. And thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Biscuits and gravy. Um, hang on. Let me go to my street folio here real quick. And we'll just look at a few because because I think few things give you a better impression of like what I actually see here in Mexico than what I can show you from the streets of like what I'm actually seeing down here. Because I talk a lot about all these different things and then it's like, okay, well, well, what now? Hang on, I'm just flipping through here, making sure I got order, order in my photos. There's, there's this impression that because things sometimes seem a little more uh, raw down here, that it's this completely different world. And in a way it is, but also in a way it's the same, right? And I think that is what doesn't connect sometimes with people, with those of us from the North or not from a particular culture. Bear with me. Just tidying up, just tidying up the clutter here, okay? And then I'll show you guys a few more photos. I'll just grab some randoms and show those to you guys. Da, da, da. All right, here, I'll switch the screen so I don't bore you. Votitos. No, everybody has a Volkswagen Beetle. Not everybody, but it's like you can get a Volkswagen Beetle down here for, I want to say, $1,000. You can get one that's, you know, that's, that's usable and you can fix it up a little bit. They're not that expensive because there were so many of them. They made them up through, I think, 1994 down here. And when I say that, I don't mean the new Beetle. I mean they made this Beetle, the original, the classic, up through like 1994. And so that's kind of, let me move myself a little bit down into the corner here. So you see a lot of Beetles like this. And that just tells you kind of, not that there's not a lot of new cars, but those don't excite me that much, right? I, I like to see what is on the street. So I'm just gonna give you a very fast photo tour. You guys can ask me questions relative to that because this is not portrait session so much as just things that I see on the streets. And you'll notice a theme of there always being Volkswagen Beetles. It's just, it's just Mexico. That's what happens, right? Hang on, let me make that full screen, get rid of the clutter. And the markets, the markets are always thriving. No, pero si tengo un frente de vocho, eso es la problema. Es que, es que si es la verdad, mira. Frente de Vocho. That's why they say I have a forehead of a, of a Volkswagen. All right. What can I say? It's not my fault. I didn't, choo I didn't choose this life of Frente de Vocho. So the streets are just always buzzing. And that's why I just love the streets. And people are just doing their thing, you know, working on their cars on the streets. I mean, heck, there's a lot of areas in the States not where even it's illegal to work on your car. In the street. This looks like they put off-road tires on this on this station wagon from the 80s, I want to say. What even is that station wagon? And it looks like something my brother Blake would drive, honestly. Christmas tree, right? Centros are always full. This tree, I think I got a, a taller crop of this. No, I don't. But here's the people. This thing is probably 200 feet tall. In the Centro, you go to a town like San Juan del Rio in Centro, and you're going to have... On a, on a normal weekend, three or 4,000 people in Centro just hanging out. On a concert, if there's a public concert or something, whoosh, more, more like 30,000 people just roaming around the central square of the town. It's crazy. We, I know that can happen at events in the States, but it's so much more organic here. Okay. So if you see anything, I'm just gonna flip through just to give you guys an idea of what the streets are like, right? What am I seeing on the streets? Whether it's you know people doing their thing, working on their cars, playing. You see it a fair amount. There we go, Ford Fairmount. 
Thank you, Steve. And there's just a lot happening. There's a lot. Oh, I didn't switch it. Sorry. I'm supposed to be showing you guys, not looking at it myself. Estoy way. Eso es lo único verdad. And so things that you wouldn't normally see on the streets. And so for a photographer like myself, that is good. Like, that's exciting for me because I get to see... what's happening on these streets. And you get to see a slice of life that I think is more real. So maybe I'll make a book of these someday when I have enough good ones. I mean, how about this? A jail, you go to the central square, you wanna chill with your girl and have a snack, but you got kids. So what do you do? You get a five minute break by putting them in the kid jail train for a buck and they're super happy to be there and they're safe because they can't, they can't escape. It's not, it's not like a jail like the US. They can leave when they're done. It's fine, all right? And so just things, I got so many of these kind of things that are just going on down here, right? Just things happening, whether it's people at the carnival, people getting out of school, People who sell merchandise and things on the street and, and herbs and their kids are just taking a nap on the side of the road. This is just stuff you see. A surgery. Uh, most of the doctors here do surgery. The same guy, the same guy that you go to to get a wart removed can remove your spleen. And like, they're actually trained. I mean, I don't mean these are like guys working out of the back of their Ford Fairlane, <laughs> okay? So, it's, it's okay. Um, and there's just a lot of things. There's a lot of activity and there's a lot happening. I could go on all night with photos like this, okay? Of just random places and people enjoying themselves, people being irritated, people doing their things, and people just having fun, motorcycles of, of all types, people just being people, day in and day out, because that's what we are at the end of the day. And frankly, I think that's pretty cool, cool. So I try to document that. And that was kind of what I was getting at with today's point. But anyways, what are we doing in the chat? I know I take one topic at a time and I ignore the chat. So now before I wrap up tonight, I want to thank you guys for being here. Before I wind up for the night, I will kind of review the chat. It looks to me like, I, I, it looks to me like you guys have been arguing in here, which is, which is amazing. You know, that's how I like it. Okay. Um, do I recommend leaving the U.S.? Yes, but I can't guarantee you that anywhere else in the world is going to stay better. But it's hard to get much less freedom than you have in the U.S. A lot's changed in Mexico also since 2002. The world consistently gets worse. Um, I see we have a little bit of trolling going on here. So, yeah, I mean, if you come by force and invade the right of another, you have forfeited your rights. So to the person pretending to be a Christian constitutionalist uh, that doesn't know the teachings of Christ or of the Constitution, <laughs> there seems to be a lot of confusion. But I understand we've been brainwashed, right? We've been brainwashed to our nationalism. Um, and the irony of the Constitution is it was based on uh, political philosophers like John Locke. And the fundamentals of that were, if you in, it doesn't matter if you're the king or the pauper, if you invade the right, the land, and the home of another for any reason, you forfeit your right to exist and they have a right to use any and all force to resist you because you are the criminal. 
That's the that's actually the basis theology that the Constitution was based on. But because we live in a world where ignorance in the form of parties and factions is sold as enlightenment from both sides, from all sides, from all parties, from all groups, from all factions, then endurance rules supreme. And that seems to be happening all over the world. Good to see you guys. Those of you who have not flipped flat, who haven't been here in a long time. I'm, I'm making videos, guys. You, the algorithm is just not showing you. You know, I, I've been really busy this month and haven't been doing much, but normally I've been making a video every week or two. But the algorithm, you have to understand, I did a video on the algorithm a while back. The algorithm is deciding what you see unless you go looking for it. And that's just the way it is. Hang on, make sure I got... Uh... Try to deal with, with logistics here, just a second. There's Sandra. Hi, Sandra. There's my girl in there. So anyways, I know I'm rambling and I'm distracted. I got to get back to work. I got to get back to real work because unfortunately this doesn't pay any bills, guys. That's why I'm trying to manage different things all the time and why I've been super busy this. And no, YouTube isn't going to send us notifications. YouTube sends notifications to the fun little entertaining things. It's not specifically that the algorithm wants to suppress all critical thought, but if it's too critical, it will suppress it. The algorithm mainly is going to give you the most dumbed down things in general that it knows you're going to watch. What it is, is the algorithm sends you notifications and shows you videos because it actually knows you better than you admit to know yourself. You think you want profound, important talks and things like that, but the algorithm is actually giving you what you consume. So don't just hate on the algorithm. Understand that what you see in the algorithm is who you actually are based on what the algorithm sees in you. It's what you actually want. And so if we look at the algorithm that way, it can tell us a lot about ourselves because the algorithm is actually responding to you on Facebook, on YouTube, and that's a little scary. <clears throat> Rick, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. We'll get some ice cream. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, First I called you a cop out, now I am you. Yeah, there's, I, I, I've always said that there's nothing wrong with retreating a bit, guys, because it doesn't really do us any good. I understand the idea, like, you know, you have to stay and fight, but why if nobody's gonna fight with me? You know, I mean, have you seen this, this thing in the States? Uh, in Montana, right? We always talk about Montana being like this stronghold. Uh, oh, there's still freedom there, but no, not not even. I mean, it's it's not even there. Did you see this thing with with the the Boyds in Montana? Do I have this video? I think I do. Hang on. Um, let's see if I got it here. This is in Madison County, Montana, right? And I'm going to try. I've, I've wanted to do a, a video on this. Hello? And, and these, guys, they were, these guys were just kind of marching across the country, these missionaries, and they had flags and stuff. And somebody, from what it appears, a local who likes to pick fights, got kind of pissed at them and was getting all over their case, and they felt threatened, and they pulled a gun, which, again, I've always said to activists, like, avoid the guns because they'll just use it to send you to jail, which is what they did. Um, and I'm still kind of digging through the whole story on this, but there was kids. This was like a family. And I figured they were going And the to irony is these police come in, right? These police come in. 
how do you? They say, oh, you pulled a gun because these people say they felt threatened. No one was hurt. But yeah, still, there was a little bit of fighting. And the police come in and draw all their guns, right? And are threatening and shooting and drawing people, little kids out of the car with their guns. And so this is the irony and the hypocrisy. Look at them sitting here pointing the gun at this car of people, right? With kids in it. So imagine the hypocrisy of a country that says, oh, our police keep us safe. Somebody drew a gun. So cops are going to go out and they're going to draw guns all over the place with willy nilly and point them at kids. And so this is what happened with this case up here in Montana. And we won't, it's getting, we're going long, so we won't get all into it tonight. But if you look up this case, you can see more about it. People are talking about it. Videos are being leaked and, and this Montana County and it's corrupt judges and police. And what's happened is you got this stupid little county with these dumb politicians who never have anything happen up there. And they just thought they could do whatever they want, right? They thought they could protect the local good old boy and throw the other people and try and make make the the, the protesters from across the country look like crazy loons. And it's all on video, all their stupidity, all their ignorance, them pulling guns on everybody, them expanding everything out of the proportion, them violating protocol. I mean, like the cop was literally like, they took the kid from the family and then he was like going out to the other guy who was involved in the incident. They didn't arrest him. They didn't even question him as being the victim. They just assumed that their local friend was right, that this whole other family who all their testimonies coincided was the victims. And like they're driving down, he's leaving this like nine-year-old kid. They're like teasing this nine-year-old kid about how their parent, their dad's going, his dad's going to jail. Uh, just total assholes in this local Podunk County Sheriff. And he's like out meeting. He goes to the other guy's house who was involved in the incident so he can pal around with him. Leaves like the nine-year-old kid in the car alone while he goes to buddy buddy around with the guy who everyone else is saying started the whole incident. So this is this is par for the course, right? If you guys don't know about this case, look it up of what happened in Montana with these missionaries. And we'll try to talk about that more because I didn't get too deep into that in this video. But yeah, nepotism in this small town. I mean, literally like one, I think one of the investigators and one of the other cops, uh, it's his wife. And they, they just do whatever they want and then cover for each other in the court. And so they, they have a nice little gang going on there, a little, a little blue ISIS gang. And they think they can do whatever they want. And for the most part, that's what police do. But eventually, the corruption will catch up. So, all right, you guys. Uh, yeah, people don't want to stand for their rights. And it's tough. But it's late. It's like 1030. I've, I've got to run. I got to wrap up some things for the night, make sure there's not too much chaos going on in the ranks, as it were. And I appreciate what it, uh, that camera just went off. Look at that. If the camera is even telling me like, I'm tired, my battery's dead. I'm going to bed, right? <laughs> so gracias a todos por quedar aquí conmigo esta noche en la tarde. You guys have a good one. Love your neighbor. Be peace. And uh, well, I'll, I'll post some clips and stuff from this video. Uh, but share it, like it, okay? Because that does help a little with the algorithm. But what the algorithm's really looking for, here's a secret, the algorithm's looking for what you spend the most watch time on. If you take a video like this where we're talking about important things and you watch two minutes, then you take another video that's about a video game and you watch 10, the algorithm says, ah, he doesn't actually care about the talk. He cares about the flashy on-screen graphics and that's what we're gonna give him because the algorithm knows you better than you know yourself. And that's a little scary. Because that controls us in ways we don't even realize. All right, you guys, peace. We will see you soon. Thanks for being here. And thanks, for, thanks to you, Super Chatters. Tacos and ice cream on the menu. I appreciate you guys. We'll do another one of these soon. It's just been a crazy month, and that's why I haven't done as many. Uh, you can send me an email, Gavin at SimeStudios.com, if you have like topic ideas or something like that, things that we want to talk about. I just don't get a lot of time to make as many videos. But shout out to all you guys, and thanks for being here. Peace.